Well, hello and welcome back to The Daily Brew, the devotional where every day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. And you join me here in Auckland, New Zealand, even though at the time of recording this, uh, well, at the time that this goes out live, I will be in the sky somewhere, traveling on my way to London tomorrow. We'll be doing it live from London, but looking forward uh, to what God is going to say today in our scripture No matter where you are around the world, great to have you here with me. Let's have a look at the scriptures that we're going to be reading today. As always, they're in the descriptions below on every platform. Psalm chapter 89, verse 14 to 18. Romans chapter 9, verse 22 to chapter 10, verse 4. And 1 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 1 to chapter 2, verse 17. Yes, 1 Chronicles. It's going to be a new book for today. We'll get into that very, very shortly. Let's talk brews before we go any further. Sorry, I'm a bit discombobulated because I'm not really here. It's not really Wednesday for me. It's actually Tuesday, but it's very confusing. Anyway, move on, Harry. Be a a professional. This is 207. You should be better at this than what you're doing. Anyway, brews for today. Common good coffee. We talked about this yesterday. Their whole vibe is that you would drink gooder feel gooder and do gooder their whole thing is about ethically sourced coffee and making sure everybody wins so uh, this is their milk roast which is designed for plant-based milks it's supposed to bring out some better flavors or something like that anyway today i've got it as a plunger with no plant-based milk just continuing on the old trend so let's give this a go today let's give this a try and see what this tastes like i'm interested to give it a go See if that lower end, because yesterday it was a bit weak. Not not much flavor, considering we're supposed to be tasting that cherry and crisp nectarine. So let's hope today's plunger pulls out some more of that flavor. Let's give it a go. Cheers. Yeah, a little bit more flavor. A little bit more flavor. Uh, as, I, as I suspected, as I hypothesized, uh, this is definitely, there's a, there's a bit more flavor in it. As the low end comes in, it actually almost has a bit of chocolate in there, which doesn't say that it's supposed to. So I don't know what I've done there to get chocolate out of it, but there is a little bit of chocolate in there. Uh, it's 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 good. It's 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 getting there. This for me is a 7.8. I'd have this quite regularly. I'm actually this is growing on me. Uh, I did have a few cups as well in between days. And I, it's, it's beginning to grow on me. I, a 7.8, I think, is fair. I'm looking forward to giving it a go on the espresso when I get home in a couple of weeks. The bag might be off. I might have to go and buy another bag. Oh, that's a bit annoying. Anyway, that's good. Happy days. Happy with that. Lock it in. 7.8. Let's move on to the devotion, the reason that we are here for today, the Bible. God's choice of the people of Israel as his chosen people doesn't make him unrighteous or unjust. There's some people that get upset that God chose Israel. Like, why did God choose Israel? Why didn't God choose America or Australia or New Zealand? What even is this voice that I'm doing? He is a God of love and faithfulness. And the reality is, is that he loves all people. The foundation of his throne is righteousness and justice. When God judges, he does so in a way that is right and is just. I believe it's God's intention, God's intention, sorry, that all the nations of the world were to be blessed by and through Israel. Where I get that from is Genesis 12, verse 3, and I encourage you to go have a look at that later. This has been made possible now through Jesus, who, uh, sorry, through him, we can walk in right relationship with God and experience that blessing that we read about in this psalm. I'm going to read you Psalm 89, verse 15 to 17 today. It's going to come up on screen as well. It says, blessed are those who who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They celebrate your righteousness, for you are their glory and strength. And by your favor, you exalt our horn. We can now, both Jew and Gentile, through Jesus, live in this blessing. God has chosen Israel as his chosen people. And this is a fact that cannot be taken, however uh, that Sorry, cannot be taken away. That's a fact. That they're, they're his chosen people. That is what it is. However, salvation is now available for both the Jews and the Gentile. And Gentile means everybody who's not Jewish. God's plan is revealed in chapter 9, verse 23 to 24 of Romans today. And this is what it says. It says, what if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of his mercy, whom he prepared in advance for his glory, even us whom he also called not just from the Jews, but also from the Gentiles. 
Listen, God's plan for salvation is wider than just the nation of Israel. God's plan for salvation is based on the following things. Number one, it's your faith, not your good works. Number two, it's mercy, not what you deserve. Number three, it's your belief, not where you were born. What a privilege to be part of God's people, to be loved by God and to be called to be his children. Now, under the new covenant sealed by Jesus's blood, nobody is excluded. That's why the only way to salvation is through Jesus, faith in him, mercy from him and belief in him. Paul writes that the one who trusts him will never be put to shame. This is not saying that we're not going to experience shame in our lives, but more to say that we will not be shamed in the long run. We can trust in him and know that in the end, we will not be ashamed by our decision to follow Jesus. The other reason that Jesus is the only way to salvation is that he's the full fulfillment of the law. The old covenant with God is broken. Jesus fulfilled the law and began a new law, a new covenant of grace. Remember that Jesus actually said that he came to fulfill the law. That's why Jesus came to the earth, to fulfill it, by being the only person to ever fully keep the law so that we could benefit. Okay, it's time for a new book today, Chronicles. The book of Chronicles is made up of two books. Both books do not state who their author is. However, traditionally, it is believed that Ezra, the priest, wrote these books. Now, these books have been written probably between 450 to two, sorry, 450 to 425 BC during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah when the Jewish people were restored to Jerusalem after the Babylonian captivity and when they rebuilt the wall that surrounded Jerusalem under Nehemiah's leadership. Now, these books historically have been one book and they were written in the Hebrew canon. They've been called the matters of the days of the kings of Judah and Israel. The Greek translators of the Septuagint gave Chronicles the name. Now, I'm going to butcher this, but this is what I'm, this is the Greek word. Paralipomena, paralipomena, which means in English, words that I can say, things left over, suggesting that these books are used as a supplement to Samuel and Kings. Throughout these books, we get further insight into Israel's history. In the first book that we're going to start reading today, we see a review of the genealogy of the Israelites and the story of David's reign. Now, with that in mind, let's dive into the book of First Chronicles with a watching eye to see what we can learn about Israel and her history by exploring Israel's family tree. Verse of the day. Verse of the day today, First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 1, simply three names, Adam, Seth, and Enosh. Now, you're about to read a series of names in the family tree of Israel, and I know what you're thinking. Harry, I cannot be bothered reading a genealogy. I'm just going to skip through these books real quick. But I want to encourage you to pa just pause for a second and just take your time and appreciate that, first of all, we can trace the family tree all the way back to Adam. That's pretty amazing. But also, appreciate the fact that holy history is not contracted from the from impers sorry constructed not contracted not contracted what do you mean it's not constructed from interpersonal forces or abstract ideas israel's history a holy history a divine history is woven from names from people unique like you and like me and it makes me think as i read this story where do i sit in god's great plan who knows what the future might entail through my life and through yours when you read the family tree through a lens like that it gets you thinking. And that is it for the Daily Brew today, day 207 of 365. Thank you so much for joining me no matter where you are in the world, even if you're on a plane today listening to this devotional. I pray it blesses you and speaks to you no matter where you are at the moment. Hey, tomorrow I'm very excited because we're going to be in London. Really looking forward to being with Equippers and Shout Conference over in Europe. It's going to be awesome. And we're doing the Kids Conference and a youth session. Really looking forward to that. Then we're going to be shooting up to Scotland, preaching in Aberdeen at a church called The Junction on the Sunday, and then spending some time a following few days with some family in Edinburgh. Looking forward to that. Today, though, if you've been reading the Bible, if you're about to read, I pray God speaks to you. I love doing this Bible devotional with you. And I pray it's blessing you as much as it is me as well. A massive thank you to everybody on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of our other audio-based platforms, for taking a moment and following us, rating the podcast, no matter what platform you're using, and to you on YouTube. Thank you for coming and having a look at my face. Thank you for that. 
Uh, I hope that it's been a blessing to you and it's been, it's never going to bless you as much as the Word of God is, but I hope that it's been a, just a good little something, something. There's a little bit of extra for you today. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and for clicking the bell so you never miss a devotional upload. That is it though for today. Join me back here tomorrow. We're going to be in London. Looking forward to seeing you then. Until then though, if it is a study day, have a great rest of your day. Unless it's sleep time, good night, sleep tight. And if you're flying, stay safe up there in the sky. Harry, stay safe. And we'll see you tomorrow back here on The Daily Brew.